Good morning. Uh, welcome on board. Uh, today we are going to be your crew on this flight to um, uh, Panama, from Madrid to Panama, this Iberia flight. Uh, my name, I'm going to be your captain. My name is Javier Sanz, and I'm going to be flying with my colleagues here, uh, Curro y Alfonso. I think the flight is going to be a very nice flight today. It will be around 11 hours. And we, um, uh, we are going to enjoy it uh, fully and it's going to be a, a very, very nice experience. We'll try to, m to make uh, an explanation of the ETOPS procedures in our company. And I'm going to be very uh, sure uh, you will enjoy it. Welcome on board. And now my colleagues will do some presentation also. Uh, for your information, I'm going to be, uh, as I said, I'm going to be your captain today. Uh, I've been flying for Iberia right now for 20, 26 years. My whole experience, flight experience, is around 18,000 uh, flying hours. Thank you very much and welcome on board. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Curro Asensi. I've been uh, flying with uh, Iberia for uh, the last uh, 17 years. I joined the company in 1997 with the 320 uh, fleet. And since uh, 2000, uh, I started flying 340. I have about 15,000 hours flight time. And uh, it's been my first year in the 330 and I'm enjoying very much this uh, plane and our new adventures in the company. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Alfonso Marque de Acuña, Sánchez Fabres, and uh, I will be your first officer, first officer today. I joined Iberia Company in 1997, I've been flying for 17 years with Iberia. Uh, first I flew the MD-87 for five years, and then in 2001 I, I joined the 340 fleet, and I've been flying 12 years, 340, and then the last year 340 and 330. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a great time with us. Good morning again. As you can see, we are in the airplane right now with the uh, whole crew on board. Today we have the pleasure to fly with the, uh, the best crew of Iberia. The cabin crew chef is the uh, Raquel Chico and the rest of the crew members today with, with us. And, you know, eight people is going to be here helping us with the uh, safety of the flight and attending <coughs> our passengers. Uh, it's going to take just a few minutes to give a, a very quick briefing about, about the flight and uh, I'll uh, give some information to the rest of the crew about the flight time and special issues. This is what we do normally and uh, today, after presentations, uh, the flying time to Panama is going to be around 11 hours. According to the weather information, we are expecting a nice flight. I don't think we have any turbulence. That, uh, that's good news for you and for the passengers. Uh, the destination, Panama, uh, the forecast is also good weather, maybe a little bit cloudy. And at the late uh, time of in the evening, uh, rain, some, some rain. This is usual at this, at this point of the year. No? Uh, about the uh, safety issues, we'll keep you, well, you know, we are going to be with the cockpit door, it's going to be closed, you know. As usual. As usual, if you need anything, you just dial the code, code. and we'll be answered or opening in case of necessary, okay? And uh, I guess you have already talked to them and uh, revise all the uh, um, emergency procedures. As usual, uh, do any of you have any questions about it? Okay, everybody has the, the uh, license, passports, and with you. Okay. Right. Okay. Remember that it's very important that in case that anything happens, just please contact with us as soon as possible so we can establish communications and we can start with the procedures. Okay. If you had uh, any trouble with sick passengers or troubled passengers, mm -hmm. you are very experienced. I know you have to handle every situation, mm -hmm. and we're going to be at your uh, disposal for anything you need. Okay? Uh, I hope we don't need it today. I'm sure we are gonna, not going to need it, but remember, just remember that in case of um, uh, not prepared evacuation, uh, any one of you can do it. Uh, three items, airplane stop, just make sure that the uh, 
people in the cockpit, the three of us, are not uh, answering and something wrong is happening uh, with us and uh, really is an imminent danger affecting the situation, okay? For the rest and for me, uh, I have nothing else to say, just enjoy the flight and uh, we're going to be Thank there you. for anything you need. You guys want to say anything else? No. Thank you. Okay, and any of you have any questions? No, no, no. Um, thank you, thank you very nice much. Flight. Have a nice flight. Hello again. We are um, now outside of the aircraft. This is an Airbus 330-300, and it's the aircraft we have today to fly to Panama. And we're going to make a, a walk around. The walk around uh, is a visual check uh, to ch to make sure that every visual part and every movable movable part of the aircraft is ready for the next flight. So uh, the first officer is the crew member designed, designated by the company, by Iberia, to make the walk around. And it's important to check that there are no fuel, oil, hydraulic, water leak leaks. And also that uh, we need to check that the parking brakes are on so we can check the, the braking wears and we're going to start on the left side of the aircraft. We check that the forward outflow valve is open, so the aircraft is not pressurized on ground. Then we continue checking the static ports. First officer, standby and captain, they are clean, they are not obstructed so they can provide reliable information to the Earth Data Inertial Reference Units. We check the angle of attack sensor, which uh, should be free to move with the aircraft speed. That's the captain angle of attack, and then we check the pitot tube and total air temperature probes. They have to be unobstructed, clean, so they can provide, uh, again, reliable information, and they're in good, in good conditions. They are always heated, so no ice can uh, disturb the information. Then we check the radom. The latches are locked and the radar, and also that there are no impacts a bird impact or ice pellet impact and it's clean. Then we go to the nose landing gear. We check the shock absorber, the actuator, the lights. We'll, we'll check the lights later on. We check the, also the tires that they are in good condition. Note the, we check the tread. It has to be to have the same tread on both wheels. Otherwise, there are no vibrations at high speeds during takeoff and landing. Uh, we check the rims, the nuts, all, all of them. Then I'm going to I'm going to to turn on all the aircraft exterior lights to check they are working properly. I make a cockpit call so they they turn on the lights. Here we have the takeoff and taxi and turn lights. Then you can see the beacon. We have two beacons, one at the bottom of the fuselage and one at the top, the landing lights. Landing lights, then we navigation lights. Green one on the right side of the aircraft, red one on the left side of the aircraft, and the white one at the tail. We come now on the right, on the left side of the aircraft, and we also check the first officer pitot tube, total air temperature probe. That's the cockpit oxygen uh, discharge, and it has to be green. That means the the oxygen pre is pressurized; it's working properly. If it becomes red, there is some malfunction and we have to call maintenance. Then we check the, both of the angle of attack sensors, standby and first officer.
We check the different antennas uh, for communications and, and uh, navigation and different equipment. We have the avionics ventilator board, should be open and that means it's venting. Again, the static ports, clean, no obstructions on them, working properly to send reliable information. We check the drain mast and also the rammer inlet intake. You can see it's raining water and then the rammer inlet intake. We have to check that all the different compartments are properly closed and latched. Then left wing, we check the slats and the leading edge of the, of the wing. Here at the engine, we check the nacelle, we check the fan blades, no impacts, no bird strikes, and uh, that the, everything is uh, in a good condition for the flight. We also check that the oil deposits are properly, are properly closed, everything is uh, ready for the flight. Also the reverse actuators, the engine is uh, uh, ready, I mean, ready to start. We check the, the mass drain. No leakages, no oil below the, below the aircraft. And then we come to the leading edge. We check the fuel magnetic dipsticks. They are all inside and uh, there are no fuel leakages in here. Also the slats, first, second, third, fourth, there are seven, seven slats that they are properly in and ready to, ready to work when needed. We check the pylons also. And here at the wingtip, we have a ventilation, fuel ventilation tank overpressure disc. We have to check that it's in place and no, no overpressure has, has uh, been has produced on the on the on the wing on the fuel tanks, also the wing fence, which is a which is a, a device to to increase the reduce the, the reduce the induced drag, so the the fuel consumption is less during the cruise. It saves fuel. Then the the static dischargers also at the at the. top of the wind, then the ailerons, movable surfaces, they are free to move. We check also the flaps now, their flaps are in and uh, they, are, they are free to move, no obstructions, no, no impacts on them, the pylons and also some static dischargers at the, at the pylons. We arrived to one of the main landing gear. Uh, it has four wheels. They, they weigh around 220 kilos each. And we have to check that the shock absorber, the actuator, the, this, these are the, the braking, braking wheels. So we can check that they are, they are uh, in a good condition and ready to break in a, in a hard, you no, know, in an emergency landing or rejected takeoff. They will work properly. We check the, the tires, the tread, no, no heats, no impacts, no blowouts on them. These are the hydraulic, hydraulic con conductions because the, the discs are actuated by, by hydraulic system. We also check that there are no leakages, no hydraulic, no fuel leakages on it. The safety pin is removed, so the, the, the landing gear can retract free on the free movement. Also, the, you have the actuator and the shock absorber. We check again the rims, the nuts, all on it. Here we come to the to the bottom part of the aircraft. We can check that the refueling refueling panel is properly closed. It's filled up with fuel. 
Today we have 69 tons to make the flight from Madrid to Panama. And then double check that it's properly latched and locked. Then we come, we check more, we have more antennas to check some drain mast. Also the potable water drain is properly locked. No, it will not open on, on during the flight. Another potable water service, all the latches are locked and on. Waste service, also locked. We go to the vertical stabilizer and trimmable horizontal stabilizer. We check again another fuel venting over pressure disc that's it in static dischargers. Both of the elevator parts, they are free to move. No impacts, no hits. Then we, we check the APU exhaust and then the, the fire extinguisher APU testing. It has to be red. That means the fire extinguisher is ready to act in case uh, APU fires exist. We also check the APU venting and also the exhaust. Come to the left side. Static discharger, left part of the elevator, horizontal trim stabilizer. They are clean. We check the leading edges also to see that no, to check that no impacts are on them. We check the backward outflow valve. Again, open. Aircraft is not pressurized. They will open and close during the flight according to the to maintain the the, prop, the appropriate pressure on the aircraft. More antennas in here. We check also the hydraulic reservoir filling. Properly locked, all the latches are locked. It will not open on the during the flight. And then we do the same on the left side of the main landing gear. Check the tires, the treads, braking wares, hydraulic connection, shock absorber, the strut, no leakages, no hydraulic leak or fuel leak. Everything is ready for the flight. Iberia Maintenance, they, they really do a great work, a great job. They, they have all, every day they have the, the aircrafts perfect and, and they, they have a, you know, a high workload, but they, they are really, really very professionals and we, are, we have al always the, air, the airplanes like new. I mean, in, I've been flying for 17 years in Iberia and never found some trouble with, a, you know, any maintenance trouble or anything that is not proper and ready for the flight. It's really a pleasure to work with them. Again, uh, the flap system, the pylons, free to move, no impacts. Uh, static dischargers. Ailerons. It's pretty much the same on the right wing on the left wing. So it's a double check that again the static dischargers, wing fence, and then the over pressure fuel venting disc. Then we check the red light, navigation red light at the left side of the aircraft. The slats, ready to move, no impacts on them. And uh, number seven, number six, number five, it has seven slats on each wing. Magnetic fuel dipsticks to measure the, the fuel quantity manually. Engine pylon, exhaust, all the reverse actuators, it's fully, fully covered and uh, in the mass drain, no oil leakages at the bottom of the aircraft. 
latches all on and lock. Then a cell, again, we check the fan blades. No impact and ready, I mean, they move freely because of the, of the air. We come here, we check the slot number one, leading edge. The landing lights are already checked and uh, we arrived to the first point that we started, the forward outflow valve. And this is pretty much the walk around on a very uh, Airbus 330. So far we have completed the uh, walk around, the uh, initially cockpit uh, preparation and safety procedures and uh, we are just about to continue with the uh, rest of the uh, cockpit preparation right now. We are going to insert the flight plan and uh, all the ETOPS entry uh, ETPs and exit points and we, you can, uh, you can follow, follow us during the whole procedure. Thank you. Well, I'm going to load the ACARS, okay? ACARS, first, is this is information three. that we sent to the uh, company one. with the flight number, uh, flight time, and then the uh, registration numbers of the, uh, every one of us. Uh, today, I'm going to be the pilot flying. So I'm going to be doing the uh, takeoff and the uh, landing at Panama Airport. That way the company can keep a record of how many landings and uh, takeoff we do during the last 90 days uh -huh. because flying both airplanes we need to have uh, two and one. Okay. In, in total going to be six, two landings and uh, two takeoffs in, in either one, but the other one have to be either 340 or 330, the, the, other, the ones you haven't done. We need to keep the currency and that's what the, how the company help us to keep up the, the record of how many landings and takeoffs we have in uh, both fleets. Okay, so today flight is Iberia 6361, it's inserted here and request the flight plan. Uh, so far, if everything works as program, we should be receiving the flight plan in a few uh, moments, so we can complete with the detailed information about the uh, today's flight plan, the uh, the uh, departure, instrumental departure, instrumental landing, and the rest of the waypoints that is not automatically inserted. The fuel is set, 69.1. Okay. Uh, 3:30. 69 is 2,400 on the tail for the train tank, which is set, and uh, check and balance the fuel. Okay, this is uh, just uh, to check that we not only have the right quantity of fuel for the flight on board, but also that is uh, balanced and uh, that we have the proper amount of fuel in each tank, okay? Thank you, Kurro. You're welcome. Uh, see, the flight plan is already over here. So today we are taking off from Madrid, so we just go to the departure page. Uh, the runway in uh, use is going to be 36 left, and the departure, according to the flight plan, uh, is uh, Back crew one Alpha Yankee. So we just look it around here, and it's back crew one Alpha Yankee right here. And we can follow the uh, every move that we made over the FMS. We can check on the uh, um, navigation display that is correct. We'll do further checks and. Uh, uh, cross checks to confirm that everything is okay. Uh, once everything is inserted, just confirm and go to the destination airport. Of course, this is the first approach because we have, as you know, 11 hours ahead and things may change during the flying time. But initially, we're expecting uh, runway 03, 03 right. Uh, there is no instrumental approach available today in Panama, so we have to do a visual approach. So far, we just insert the, the, the runway in use, and, uh, and we leave the flight plan open, 
uh, in uh, discontinuity because of the uh, uh, no instrumental approach. So we we'll have to wait until the end. Okay. The uh, distance, just to make an overall check and see everything is right. The distance in the flight plan is 4,460 miles. And uh, uh, we have here 4,478. So <laughs> is uh, please close, yeah. 4,460 against 4,478 is very close. So I imagine everything is okay. Curro, you want to yes. check? Well, if you want, I, I can give you the information over here and you go okay. on the paper. So we finish the. Oh, yes, eight. please. Alternate uh, is Maroc. Mike, Romeo, Oscar, Charlie. The cost index is 6. And Cruise eight. level and temperature is 310 minus 46. Okay. And the headwind today, the flying time maybe is a little bit longer than usual because we have a component of headwind of three, three eight, 38 knots. So okay, perfect. So uh, the flight plan goes through the um, direct waypoints to back crew. Elbar, Gunti, and then from Gunti, I check we, here. we go to the first waypoint. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the uh, notice to the captain for the special cargo that we have today on board that has been already checked and uh, the, uh, the amount, the, uh, the, the uh, kind of uh, cargo that we are um, Good uh, today on the uh, holds. Uh, everything is correct. It's checked by the dispatcher and it's checked by the uh, person in charge of flight and it's checked also by the crew. So I just give you cualquier este. This one is for you. Este también is for you. This one is this one is for Thank us. You. And uh, this is the load sheet today. So uh, here we have a few more things to check. First place, the, the, the flight is 6361 from Madrid to Panama. The airplane, the uh, registration is the same. The configuration today is 36 business class and 242 is the maximum capacity in uh, tourist class. Uh, today we are going to be at uh, 15 in the front and 119 in the back, which makes a total passengers on board of 206. Uh, 206 with the load, with the cargo that today we have uh, 3,424 cargo plus 75 kilos of mail, makes a total of 24,633 kilos, which is much about what we have expected. The dry operating weight that makes the zero fuel weight uh, actual. And the takeoff fuel is another important figure to, to we check, 69 tons. And we have here the 68, 200 because of the taxi, uh, well, the, the fuel burned during the taxi uh, time. That makes a total takeoff weight of 222 tons. And the landing weight with the uh, fuel burn, supposed fuel burn during the flight, 162. Everything is without limits. No problem today. The most limitation uh, comes today is the uh, takeoff, uh, takeoff, uh, takeoff weight. Okay. Uh, the distribution in the cargo holes, in the hole number one, we only have 263 kilos which is correct. Hole number two is 22,941. Also check. Hole number three, check. And hole number four is perfect. So, Curro, if you want. Yes, um, ready. The MAC of the zero fuel weight today is 29.1. Yes. The zero fuel weight actual is 
0.880 so 9 with 69 with 69 that makes a takeoff weight of 2 2.9 2 okay perfect and the mark for takeoff yes is 28.3 28.3 we take check here and it's three and a half 28.3 okay perfect so we are signing the load sheet just 12 okay on time perfect this is for you thank you very much have a nice Bye. day <laughs> have a nice day enjoy it Clock four five two six QH one zero two two. Iberia six three six one is clear to Panama five thirty six left Barco one Alpha Chunky and on the squawk four five two six. Iberia six three six one. Iberia six three six one eighty six is correct. Thank you. For pushback twenty one point seven. Iberia six three six one the status approved and for push that's correct. One two one six two five. One two one six two five. Thank you. Hola, Iberia. Six three six one five seven three. Push back up to the north, please. For runway three six left. Three six left to the north. Approve, Iberia. Six three six one. Hola. Ground. Briefing today. I'm going to be the pilot flying. There's nothing special. Nothing affecting the airplane. Nothing affecting the airport. This is going to be a nice airport to come back in case uh, we just need it. Uh, standard procedures and. Uh, for everything before 100 knots, I will say stop. You help me with the uh, with the brakes, Alfonso. You are uh, um, in charge of the communications on the ground at any time. Okay, in case of failures. Between uh, 100 and B1 that we have to check right now, we'll do any stop by. Totalmente listos ahora. Okay, then cancel the push, sir. You you call the back when fully ready. You will be numbered. Either four, five, six, or nine, five. Okay, Curro, as I was saying, and uh, between 100 knots and B1. Any failure affecting master caution or master warnings or anything that you can see and both can see that the flight is going to be impossible to per perform, okay? Again, I will say stop, reverse, help me with the brace, just confirm that everything is working automatically or not, depends. And uh, in any case, we stop on the runway, we check what is really happening and if uh, there is any emergency procedures with the parking brake set, I will call to the uh, cabin crew and I uh, will give you the order to start with the kind of actions. Okay? Uh, after B1, today I'm at the pilot flying, so I will continue with the flight and when I feel comfortable and I feel that I can make uh, the uh, navigation and communications, I will tell you, I will use the autopilot in case that is working and uh, I continue with the flight, and you both, Alfonso and you, will be with on uh, working on the uh, ECAM procedure. Okay, we'll check now if we have, if we can come back. If we have to do an overweight landing or, or whatever. Okay, and for the rest, the standard departure is already checked. The uh, engine failure is on the uh, secondary flight plan and it's already inserted and it's already checked everything is correct and uh, this is our home base and we do it every day okay so thank you very much for your help on the preparation of the flight and we can okay we can go with the speeds calculations and the uh, temper <coughs> flex temperature. <coughs> okay, I agree with you. So it's flap one. And you can take this condition, which is V1, 156 knots. 156. Ground to cockpit, ready to push back. Waiting for your command. Okay, I will put you back. Okay, copy that. VR 165. 
165. B2, 167. Flex, 40 degrees. Acceleration altitude will be between 3,350 and 4,050. Okay, 300, 500. 3,500, okay. Mm. And in case you want to return, the most critical condition will be... Uh, go ahead, sir. Radio 6361, uh, fully ready okay. again for push. Okay, I will call you back. There's a traffic uh, that will be taxing behind, sir. I will call you back. Roger, stand by. This... Okay, this 1.15 percent is a safety margin that we use uh, in, in, in on Iberia procedures for every case uh, so except uh, in emergency procedures. Straight ahead. Iberia 6361, push back up roof on 573 to the north. To the north, 573, push back up roof, Iberia 6361, thank you. Okay, we are ready and clear to push back. Let me know when I can release the parking brakes. Before I start checklist, coordinate check perform. perform. Windows, Windows. doors, Windows. beacon, thrust levers, parking brake. ATC transponder. Four two five six. No, four five. Four five two six. Starting number one. Clear number one. Non compete door close on lock. Before start checklist completed. Okay, ignition. Starting number one. Thermal open okay, number one. We have pressure. Engine is turning. Screening number one. Your intercom. Please. Okay. Set parking brake open for Parking brakes set. Thank you. ETT, fuel flow, and one is rotating. Everything is on the green sector. Okay, start about close, number one. Close. Number two. Clear number two. Thanks. Starting number two. 40 psi is enough pressure. Start while open number two. Hitting by fast release. Thank you. Tailing. Number two running. Thanks. Fuel flow. It's looking very good today. Bath close. Star -bath close. After the star items and the flaps that's going right. to be flap one, please. Okay, thank you very much for your cooperation. We have uh, both engines running on the wind, no problems. Thanks a lot, as I said. I enjoy. Have a very nice day. Thanks. Okay, gentlemen, have a nice ride. Wait for my hat right now on your late hat ride. I'll see you back in Madrid, bye. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll uh, see you on the left-hand side, thanks. After yes, start, sir. checklist and TS protection. Not required. APU. IPU off, please. Flaps. Flaps is one and one plus F on the green. The camera status. Camera status normal. And trims. Trims. I said it's 28, which is correct. Okay. After start checklist completed. Okay, flight controls check. Cool. Elevator full up. Full down. Neutral. Left. Right. Neutral. Okay, rather. Rather. Full left. Full right. And neutral. My controls. Your controls. Okay, slide. Cabin crew. No passing over the control. Okay, ready to taxi. Iberia 6361, ready taxi. Iberia 6361, taxi. Straight ahead, Echo Bravo, you hold shot of November. 
Straight ahead, Echo Bravo, Hawks for November, Iberia 6361. Thank you. Clear. Clear right. All right, let's go. Okay, we are commencing our flight to Panama. And uh, we are taxiing north. Uh, we have to go around the terminal building because the uh, runway 36 left is just on the other side. Uh, let's go. Slowly, there is another Iberia 340 just ahead of us. We don't need to carry All right, let's go on the brakes. Normal for direction. And if you want, we can read the uh, taxi checklist. Taxi checklist, flight controls, check, slice, arm. arm. Instrument departure, load it and check. Load it. Flight instruments. Everything is correct. There is no flags heading the runway on the radio maps. Then I going to need Golf Echo. Golf Echo. Uh, Bravo Romeo Alpha, Sierra Sierra Yankee. Set. Okay, thank you. Instrument of, uh, flight instrument check, briefing. Briefing is performed. There's no changes. I will be flying today. Take off data. It will be today 156, 165, 167 with uh, 40 degrees flex. D2. One, two, three thousand initially. And uh, with a gross weight of 2.7 two, two and almost 29. Uh, okay, the mark. When, when possible, Puro plus just one plus F. Insert the uh, stabilizer position, please. Go. I'll say to you right now. Um, right, there is a new colors, there's a new colors of the Iberia airplanes over there. Buenas tardes, señores pasajeros. Bienvenidos a bordo. Les habla el comandante. Mi nombre es Javier Sanz. Estamos en estos momentos aproximándonos al punto de espera de la pista en servicio. Hoy vamos a despegar en dirección norte. El principio, eh, y de acuerdo al tráfico que hay en este momento en el punto de espera, pues eh, esperamos algunos minutos de demora que intentaremos hacer lo posible para recuperar una vez estemos en vuelo. Eh, el vuelo hoy, y de acuerdo con la información meteorológica que tenemos disponible, esperamos que sea bastante tranquilo. La duración del mismo hasta nuestro destino es de casi 11 horas, 10 horas 55. El tiempo en Panamá en este momento será bastante bueno, con una temperatura exterior de 27 grados. Y en cualquier caso, les actualizaremos esta información antes de la llegada. Muchas gracias por su atención y por favor, cualquier cosa que necesiten no duren en contactar con algún miembro de la tripulación. Feliz vuelo, muchas gracias. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board. This is the captain speaking. My name is Javier Sanz. For your information, uh, right now we are approaching the holding point of runway use. Today we are taking off northbound. Initially, and uh, because of the traffic also here with us, and uh, we may have a few more minutes delay we, before we can take off. Anyway, we'll do our best in the flight to recover this, uh, this time and uh, arrive on time to our destination. According to the weather information that we have available right now on board, we are expecting a nice flight today. Uh, in Panama, the weather in Panama also is very good with uh, temperatures around 27 degrees and uh, in any case I will give you updated information before landing. Thank you very much for your attention, I hope you all enjoy the flight and uh, please if you need anything contact with any cabin crew member. Thanks a lot and happy flight. We have to give way to that one. Okay, I'm back here with you. For your information, uh, just let me know that today we are on the, on the cockpit. We are the standard 
a crew for uh, for this flight. In our company, every flight which is below nine hours and 25 minutes, we go two pilots on the cockpit, and uh, every flight that is uh, lasting over nine hours and 25 minutes. Initially, we go three pilots in the cockpit, so we can uh, arrange uh, a period of uh, around three hours of uh, rest during the flight. We, as, as you could see before, I, I guess, we have a small compartment just uh, in the back of the cockpit with uh, two uh, kind of uh, beds, and that's a resting, okay, resting place. We can show you later if you want. It's a turn left after departure to fly what we have inserted in the FMS before. Uh, over here we can continue with the uh, departure of restrictions. They are also uh, checked, as we said, all the minimum altitudes on the different waypoints. It's very important in Madrid, and it's very important in uh, every airport because of the uh, noise levels and the contamination procedures yeah. okay today we have no problem and with this this airplane the performance are uh, fantastic and normally we have no problem in any case it's a little bit different when we take off from madrid or any airport on on summer days where it's very hot, and especially with the 340, 300 of heavy weights and uh, high temperatures, sometimes we may we may have trouble to gain altitude and go over the uh, constraints, altitude constraints. In that case, we should inform the uh, tower control and uh, I give an explanation of the uh, or reason of why we are not complying with the restrictions on that day. Uh, also in the uh, 330 we have uh, extra power in case we need it we can uh, use some charts that we have we're not able to have uh, enough power with the regular thrust and in order to perform the takeoff we can uh, use the pump Bravo uniform mic Papa and uh, with the charts, we, t we take the speeds and uh, flap setting, and we can add about uh, 2,000 kilos more in order to be able to, to get to our destination. In case the load uh, on board is uh, heavier than usual, or the temperature, as Captain just mentioned previously. And the, the way to use it is uh, on the ground, when you're in the runway, you push these buttons over here, like the ones we have for the to disconnect the auto throttle or the autopilot and it will just increase a bit uh, the amount of percent of the engines and it will allow us to take uh, more weight in that case and in that scenario. It's only you only need to push one of them. before inserting the flex temperature and everything. Uh, and you need to do it before the flight. It's, nothing, it's, it's not something that you can decide at this point of the flight. You, you have to decide it when you dispatch a flight and uh, before making all the calculations for takeoff. Extra power. For your information, these engines, is, they have around 70,000 pounds of uh, thrust is 68,000, uh, which one. is each one, each one, yes, which is uh, enough, much more than enough for the weight that uh, we have today on board. Uh, you will see that it climbs uh, with the rate of climb much better than uh, 300, uh, 340, 300, and uh, normally. Uh, in normal conditions, for instance, today the optimum flight level is around 350, and the maximum is around 370, which in, means uh, a, a very, a very good performance from takeoff for these kind of flights, long haul flights. 
before takeoff. Takeoff runway. Takeoff runway is three confirm, six. Confirm three left. six left. Cabin crew ready and advice. Ticas. TA array. Engine star selector. Normal. Pax. Pax off. Eka memo. Eka memo. Check. The status is check. All. Confirm. Confirm. All greens. Flap one plus F. Before takeoff checklist completed. Okay. Today I will set the terrain on the navigation display. Okay. 32 minutes after engines start. Buenos días, Torre Rivera. 3830, ¿cómo está listo? 3830, muy buenas. On runway 36 left. Adiós, Okay, we are on the runway. Just about to start our flight, take off, and uh, hope you are all ready and that you enjoy with us the, the whole flight to Panama. Today, during the takeoff, as you can see, we are going to have a little bit of wind from the left, so uh, you will appreciate it just on takeoff. As soon as we uh, move the landing gear out of the ground, you will appreciate how we move a little bit to the right because of the wind effect. We'll have to correct it. Okay, the other traffic just ahead of us is 7.5 miles and almost 3,000 feet over the ground. Iberia All right. six, 361, wind uh, 3007 knots, casting 19. Are you are clear for takeoff runway 36 left? Clear for takeoff 36 left, Iberia. Okay, ready for takeoff? Ready. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Our takeoff time. Let's go to Panama. First, first power set to 50. And let's go. A little bit more to 70 because of the wind. And flex 40 degrees. Out of thrust blue. Check. Take off power set. Eh, revise su radio, por favor, se lo recibe muy bajito. Sí, ya tengo una nueva Yankee 360, la calle más general. 100, 100. B1. 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 Rotate. Positive rate. Get up. Get up. Nap. Nap. Green. Speed is a little bit over the uh, B2. Because... Because I don't trust the chain wind It's almost 20 knots on the ground, 6 knots reducing right now. I don't like it very much. Departure, Iberia 6361, Barco 1. climb. Departure 3700. Iberia 63. Uh, 9 hours 6361, buenos días, radar contact. Dirigir uh, a Asclias, climb 13,000 feet. Climb 13,000, inicial, Iberia 6361, thank you. Direct climb, direct rise, rise now, flaps on. Okay. Uh, it looks now everything is more stable, wind is just in front of us, on the expected. And we can continue with our departure. Okay, climb, climb. Climb, climb. 
At this point, we just lower a little bit the nose and let the speed continue increasing. Uh, this part of the flight, all we have to do is wait until the speed reaches the X indication, and that means we can continue uh, uh, flaps from position up. Okay, we are over the speed, so flap zero. Speed check, flap zero. Clearly over the constraint, we are overflying the uh, waypoint at uh, 5,800 feet, which is 600 feet over the constraint. Blue. One two thousand blue. Airplane is clean. Flap and here. All right. Okay. This uh, uh, colors and right on the right hand side of the navigation display is because of we have uh, selected the terrain display on and it reflects all the mountains over there in the north of. Spain of uh, the uh, community of uh, Madrid. No? We are all three uh, fans of the mountain bike and uh, this is our normal area of uh, riding. Riding and training. And training, yes. On Monday we have a route here. Monday. Mm -hmm. Anytime we have a chance we just put the bike in the car and uh, just go over there and enjoy. Okay. First, first power set to 50. And let's go a little bit more to 70 because of the wind. Uh, flex 40 degrees, out of thrust blue, check, take off power, set. Revise su radio, por favor, que lo recibe muy bajito. 100, 100. Because I don't trust the chain wheel in this type of It's almost 20 knots on the ground, 6 knots reducing right now. I don't like it very much. Departure, Iberia 6361, Barco 1. climb. Departure 3700. Iberia 6361, buenos días, Raider Contact. Dirigir a Esclia, Climb 13000 feet. Climb 13000, initial Iberia 6361, thank you. Delayed climb, the red rise, now, back on. Okay. It looks now everything is more stable, wind is just in front of us. 
on the expected. And we can continue with our departure. Okay, climb, climb. Climb, climb. At yeah. this point, we One just three, lower three. a little bit the nose and let the speed continue increasing. Madrid, on this part of the flight, all we have to do is wait until the speed reaches the X indication, and that means we can continue uh, uh, the flaps from position up. Okay, we are over the speed, so flap zero. Speed check, flap zero. Clearly over the constraint, we are overflying the uh, waypoint at uh, 5,800 feet, which is 600 feet over the constraint. Thousand blue. One two thousand blue. Airplane is clean. Flap and gear. All right. And after takeoff, checklist. checklist. Landing gear up. Up. Flaps retracted. Packs. Packs on. Ivaro ref. Standard, standard, altitude check. Set anchor check. After takeoff, checklist completed. <coughs> okay. So far, we are only clear to uh, fly level 140. Today is a lot of traffic around Madrid area. And uh, six is one. One six zero blue and check. One six zero blue, check. Okay. Three six three six one. Flight level three two zero climbing three three zero requesting three five when able. Iberia 6361, Roger, muito bom dia, radar contact, continue plan, flight level 350. Very clear, flight level 350 for final, Iberia 6361, thank you, Lisboa. Well. Now we need to get our clearance in order to be able to fly the Atlantic Ocean, the clearance for the uh, cross. We used to do that by voice, not anymore. Uh, uh, now we do only by voice when it's not working the acres and the CPDLC. So we first have to notify the ATC center, which today is going to be Santa Maria. We notify here Lima, Papa, uh, where is Santa Maria? Lima, Papa, Papa, Oscar. Lima, Papa, Papa, Oscar. We notify them and now it's active. The system works very fast and it's very easy to understand. That way we can uh, request the clearance with them. So Oceanic clearance request. Iberia 6361, Lima, Papa, Papa, Oscar. Entry point today is going to be Gunti. Gunti Over here. is right here. And uh, our time, estimate time is 12, 11. 11. Any change with uh, plus minus three minutes, we have to let them know. Uh, and the MAC is going to be 0 0.80. 0 0.80. Flyable 350. And uh, ABLE 370 at 
uh, we see uh, in a couple hours. 20 minutes, but we can tell them a uh, couple, couple hours. So it will be one, two, one, one, three, three, two, one, three, zero. Good one, afternoon, three, 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 Fly level 370. One is loaded with display over here, and we both check Oceani request 6361 entry by Gunti at the time, Mach number, fly level, and able uh, fly level 370. And then we send to them. And we just wait for the answer. It's already done. Since today we're working with ADS mode C, this time, because it's the entry point, we have to notify. We have here already Oceanic message request received at 1124-6361. If not clear within 50 minutes, so we take time here, report to voice message. Normally it works nice and very quickly, so it's just uh, in case. As I was telling you, ADS mode C is the advanced ones, and uh, in case uh, you have uh, to correct your estimate to one point, uh, if your mode C, it will do automatically. But the entry point, uh, if it changes more than uh, three minutes, we have to report. But uh, during the Atlantic, it, it reduced the load traffic, the load uh, for us, because uh, it will update automatically and it will report to the control in case uh, the, 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 the wind uh, has uh, changed for the one we have requested and we have loaded and the estimate, or in case we have to deviate for a thunderstorm and the uh, estimate it, it changed for more than three minutes, uh, it will notify them. And we just have to wait for the oceanic clearance. Once we have it, we will print it and uh, check it with our flight plan to see what we loaded. And in case we have to make any adjustments, we will do it here. Uh, in, in this case, that today we are flying into the Santa Maria area first, we we could uh, fly over the Gunti position, the entry point in Santa Maria FIR, without the without having received the oceanic clearance. But in some other cases, like uh, Shangwik, it wouldn't be possible to do that. If uh, you reach one of the entry points to the uh, Shangwik FIR, and uh, you have not received the oceanic clearance, you didn't supposed to go further. You have to wait. You have to make a hole in that position and wait for the clearance to continue your flight. It's a little difference between different different FIRs and different uh, areas of control. We got okay, the clearance. Clearance on board. Yes, print it. What we do now? Knowledge and print. We print the clearance and we check now on both on the flight plan and on the chart. Oceanic confirm will be followed. Oceanic clearance 1129 Zulu time. We close this message and the new one. Oceanic message acknowledge receive. Uh -huh. Six pages. Gunti. Print and acknowledge. At this point, it's always needed to be uh, mm -hmm. both pilots do a cross check of the clearance with a flight plan presented to the ATC. From Lima, Papa, Papa Oscar, control Oceani message. Acknowledge receive, uh -huh. cleared to Mike Papa Tango Oscar. Uh -huh. Yes. Via Gunti. Gunti. Random route, 
38 north, 20 west. Yes. 36 north, 30 west. 36, 30 west, yes. 34 north, 40 west. Confirm. 30 north, 50 west. Confirm. Fifth. Confirm. I'm from Gunti. Maintain. Gunti, one, two, one, uh, one, last we report. Uh -huh. Maintain Mach point eight zero, flight level three five zero. All right. It, and also it says after passing fifth, follow flight plan route. End of the message. Okay, so uh, again we check here on Gunti. Gunti one. Gunti is number one. Okay. Three eight north, two zero west, number two. Two. Three six north. 3-0 west, number 3, 3-4 three. Three, north, 4-0 west, number 4, four. and 3-0 north, 5-0 west, 5, five. and 5-C five will be number 6. Okay. And then flight plan route to destination. Roger. Okay, today there is no any change. We have been clear to follow the, uh, the, the flight plan that we have presented initially by the company. And uh, that's all. The next important thing is before entry the ETOPS sector, we're supposed to be checking that the weather conditions in all the uh, en route alternates uh, are within limits and we can go into the uh, ETOPS sector without no problem. In case so, yeah. any weather conditions affecting the alternate has changed and in case we cannot use it as an uh, alternate airport for today's flight. We have to choose another one in good conditions and we have to make a replan, replanification of a flight. But I think it's not going to be the case today. This is one of the best things that we have from the airplane. We, we have the best office views than uh, anyone can have. Santa Maria, good morning, Iberia 6361. Iberia 6361, good morning, Iberia 6361, CPDLC, ADS connected. Next will be New York, over 40 west. Our cell call today, Delta, Sierra, Fox Papa, approaching Gunti, flight level 350. Abide 6361 no voice message required with uh, New York on 40 West, 17952-13354. Okay, Maria. Next thing here in the MNFS is to make an offset. So we are flying, as you can see, as you can see, we are going to, to turn uh, to the right and we are going to, going to be flying from now on, just press when you want, and we are going to be flying one nautical mile to the, right, to the right of our route. And this is a normal procedure for every traffic, every airplane within the MNFS system. Just to avoid that every airplane goes on the same track for the case that you have to do any emergency descent or whatever to the next waypoint. So far, we are on uh, three hours, 32 minutes of flight, approaching the ETOPS entry point, which is, as you can see on the chart, is here. And from this point, remember I told you, we are gonna be into the ETOPS sector until the exit point. What we do in this case is we check the weather, uh, weather information at the different airports, alternates, 
and destination. We make sure that we are within limits. Today, uh, it's a very, very nice flight. There is no problem at all. Uh, in Panama, maybe a little bit of showers in the vicinity of the airport, but uh, weather is not bad. Uh, Lajes, which is one of the alternates, is today is no windy. In visibility, is 10 kilometers. A little bit cloudy, but uh, it's under perfect conditions. And the same is with uh, San Juan, the Puerto Rico. Mm, weather is not affecting at all. So once we check the weather conditions for the en route alternates, we send a message to the company Flywatch system. And here on the ACARS menu, there is a, a one of the screens is prepared and we have made the connection only for this. We just check the conditions are um, uh, check and normal. So we have yes over here and just send it to our company. So they know that we can go into the ETOPS uh, sector and we can continue with a normal flight. Once once we enter the uh, ETOPS sector, uh, the flight is normally changed into a normal flight. Uh, any incident, any abnormal situation, any emergency, we handle like in a normal flight. And we have the authority to continue with the flight divert to the alternate airport and take all the appropriate measures that we consider is the safest option in the, for the, the each different case. Okay, next waypoint that we have to check is the equal time point, which is right over here. From the, the entry point to the uh, ETP, today we only have one ETP. Uh, anything that happens, we're supposed to go back to Lajes, which is here. And from the ETP onwards, we're supposed to divert to San Juan. And we check the weather conditions are okay, so there's no problem with any of the uh, different alternates. Also, in the progress, uh, first of all, in the fix info page, we can introduce any fix that we want to have a certain information about it. So what we do normally is to insert the first ETOPS point, the entry point, and on the second page, which is the next one, we insert the first diver diversion alternate. So just in case we need to go over there, we know where it is, okay? If you want, right now at this point that we see that everything is quite good today and we have a very, very comfortable flight. I have, uh, I have brought some information that uh, I think it will be uh, for your interest about the uh, ETOPS flight, you know. First of all, for you all, I know most of you, you may know what it means, but the uh, ETOPS meaning uh, is extended range twin engine aircraft operations. And this extended range can be over the sea, like today, over the ocean, or it can be also over remote areas like uh, deserts, you know. The, uh, can I have the, the chart, please? First of all, this was, this kind of flights were considered to uh, uh, authorize twin, twin engine aircraft to fly over extended range operations when they, uh, uh, they were flying uh, more than 60 minutes of flight from a suitable airport, from an adequate airport, you know? 
under certain conditions. And this is what we have here. And this is represented by these green circles around adequate airports. The distance from here to here, is this distance is what we supposed to check and we calculate as a 60 minute flight under certain con center conditions. Uh, which conditions? In Iberia, these conditions is under this airplane. Uh, we calculate the distance at 330 knots, weight of 230 uh, tons, and uh, flight level 150. Uh, we go to the charts, and it comes up to be 425 nautical miles, more or less, you know. After the airline is being operating for a certain uh, time, in, uh, in the case of Iberia, uh, first of all, we weren't under the first year of operation. We had no ETOPS authorization. Then we stayed for another year under 120, 120 minutes uh, clearance. And right now we are clear with the Spanish authority to extend our ETOPS operations to 100 and 80 minutes. This means that we can fly up to 180 minutes from a suitable airport, okay? Always, and we always need to be without the range uh, of another airport and also in the one, one, uh, 180 minute rule. In this case, we are using two airports, and uh, here the 180 minute a circle is in the orange line. They cross over here. So this flight is always going to be under these conditions. We wouldn't be able to fly into this area because we will be outside the 180 minute circle. So this area is a no flight zone for us today. In Iberia, with these airports, we cannot fly on this area. We but we can do it straight to our destination, okay? So the difference is that once we get, we reach the point, the entry point, the 60 minute circle, we start flying within the ETOPS sector until the exit point. As a single uh, case, just in a, in a case by case situation, we could be able to divert up to the 15% over the clearance limit. The 180 minutes can be extended to 207 minutes, always with the authorization of the uh, 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 Spanish authorities and uh, in a case-by-case -case basis. It's not something that we can decide just before the flight. Okay? Of course, to be able to fly ETOPS, we need to comply with we need to comply with a certain measures. Uh, the airplane, the company, and the, and the crew. Um, the airplane is certified by Airbus. We have all these uh, systems. It's a redundancy in the systems the communications, all the uh, cargo fires, all the oxygen requirements, on the flight controls, um, all the systems, they have redundancy and they all comply with the certain requirements to be under these conditions. Then the airline needs to be a, a certificate also, and we have the, the pilots, we have the and training required to be authorized to fly these kind of flights. You know? Uh, in the case of Iberia, let me see, I'm going a little bit fast over here. 
Of course, maintenance, they have a special procedures for ETOPS airlines, for ETOPS uh, airplanes that we check before the flight. We need a special ETOPS release that we check today before our flight in the flight look, in the flight uh, logbook that I showed you before. And, uh, and we come here to the operating to the operating procedures. Uh, this should be an adequate airport, almost any airport with a runway and fuel with enough to be operate uh, operate in this airport is considered an uh, adequate airport. What is important is that all these adequate airports that we use in Iberia has to be declared and authorized for the Spanish authorities. And it ha they have to be listed under the ETOPS procedures. Okay. Next, which is important, is that uh, to use any of these airports as an en route al alternate, we need, besides to be adequate, we need to be suitable, and that includes the weather conditions. That airport has to comply with certain weather conditions to be used in the flight plan. No? You can see here how the 60 minute rule would be affecting the flight. In this case, the normal flight would have been planned around here. There's no permission to cross direct from east to west. And once and once you have, uh, this will be the ETOPS sector with the 60 minute rule. And once you have your clearance, in this case, because the program is, uh, it was performed, was prepared um, before we got the 180 minute uh, clearance, it was made for 120, but for the case of the explanation, I think it's the same. No? When you have the clearance, you calculate the distance to your suitable airports with a 120, and we can see here what we show you in the chart. This should be the green circles, and this one here should correspond to the orange ones. And in this case, the flight can be prepared through this sector. It's not, we don't have to go up to the, mo to the north anymore. We can do a shorter flight, we can do a more efficient flight, and we can save a lot of fuel. Okay. Uh, something else that I want you to show is how we calculate the uh, maximum time for deviation. Uh, you have to choose, and this is a company information, you have to choose the data that you want to use for this calculation. And we, according to the operation in Iberia, we have chosen a, a speed, diversion speed of 300 knots, a reference weight of 220 kilos, and a flight level of 180. And with this information, we come here 310 knots and uh, 220 kilos, tons, and the 120 minute rule. And this is the distance that we have to check from the suitable airport. In our case right now, we move one more step to 180 minute. So this distance should be 1,217 nautical miles from a suitable airport. And that is what we used. That is what we use to calculate where to calculate. Excuse me. Where can the route be flown? In the same way that we are doing today in, with our flight, the ETOPS entry point would be here on the 60 nautical mile circle. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. Yes. 
And of course, all these calculations are theoretical calculations because on the real, on the real life, then any uh, diversion can be affected by the wind. You may have headwind or tailwind and the distance on the time can be a little bit longer, a little bit increase. increase you know? uh, another important thing, another important thing is the, uh, the equal time points. It, it, it uh, equal time points, uh, it should be a point where the uh, time to uh, proceed to any of these uh, diversion uh, airports under ideal conditions and no wind should be the same. Okay? So in any case, before the ETP, we should proceed to uh, the first uh, diversion airport, and after the ETP, we should go to the other one. And this is just what we show you on the uh, on the flight here on the on the cockpit. Huh? Uh, important, very important before before using these airports is a important thing when we are dispatching the airplane on the ground. The uh, alternate conditions, the alternate airports weather conditions, have to be a little bit mm, better than the uh, conditions under the different precision approaches. For instance, for a precision approach CAT1, ILS category 1, the uh, DH or the, uh, the decision altitude has to be increased by 200 feet. And the visibility has to be increased by 100 meters. On a no precision approach, the uh, MDA has to be increased by 400 feet, and the visibility has to be increased on 1,500 meters. And for CAT 2 and CAT 3 operations, you need a specific uh, authorization. This means that, this means that, for instance, Lages, which is one of the is one of the alternates on our flight plan today. The normal requirements for the approach for an ILS is 410 feet for the decision altitude and 1,600 meters as a runway visual range. When we are dispatching the flight, we to use this airport as a en route alternate. We need to increase this 410 feet by 200 feet. So it means it has to be over 610 feet. And we need to increase the visibility by 100 meters. And instead 1,600, we need 2,400 meters. And this is only for dispatch. Once we are in the air, right now we have to proceed to the alternate. We go back to the normal reference, to the normal minima information. Okay. Any other important things uh, that you may be interested also is uh, <laughs> is the uh, period of time where the conditions have to be under this minima, under this situation, and the the, the period that period of time. We call it the window of variability, of, um, and uh, that means that if we are flying from Madrid and we reach the first ETP, so we need to deviate to the first diversion point, the earliest time that we could arrive to the diversion point is always flying this route, making the decision to go over there, and for instance, let's, let's think that we have a passenger, a medical situation on board, and the airplane is perfect, but we have to go to the diversion airport. In that case, we could maintain our flight level, and we can maintain a speed, and we can do a normal flight. So taking into account all these considerations, the earliest time that we can arrive to this airport should be the beginning of the window. The latest time, the latest time of the window should be if you go continue on the flight 
and you have, for instance, uh, a depressurization on this point. You have a problem with the uh, air conditioning, with the uh, with the pressure of the airplane. You have to descend to flight level 100, and from here you have to fly to the diversion airport. Let's say a long range cruise, and that should be the latest time with the worst conditions, flight condition in terms of speed to reaching the alternate airport. Those two times are the beginning and the end of the period of uh, availability of this alternate. And we need to know always the weather conditions of this alternate in this period of time. We check it before takeoff, we have checked it right now before entry the ETOPS sector, and we are continuously checking the weather conditions. It is so important that, for instance, if uh, on the ground before takeoff we have a delay over an hour, <laughs> the company automatically does this job for us, is checking all the weather conditions and make sure that we don't need to change or any of the alternate, because it may be affecting weather conditions may be worse than planned in advance, and we may need to change the alternate and do the same, the same thing for another alternate. In that case, we would have to go to the chart and prepare, uh, reject the alternate airport, look for another one uh, under better conditions, weather conditions, and make a fully replanification in flight. Of course, in, in Iberia, with the, the help of the flight watch and the company, it would be easier. But we would need to find out the alternates over here, and we would need to find out the ETPs and calculate everything with our, our means in the, in the cockpit. In this case, the alternate uh, airports for today's flight are uh, Lages and San Juan de Puerto Rico, and the windows of uh, availability of uh, both of them, in the first case, is from 15.10 to 21.03 Sulu time. And for San Juan, it's 19.02 to 21.05 Sulu time. So this means it's the earliest time that I could be at this alternate in the first case, and this means this is the latest time that I could be at this airport in the second place, in the second, in the case of the depressurization, okay? Very important. Then, uh, of course, all the fuel is calculated for the flight plan, and then we have a special consideration And then we have a very, very special consideration, let me show you. For the critical point, the critical point in terms of, of fuel, the fuel we need to complete the procedure. In this case, uh, it is considered that we go through the flight plan, we divert to the alternate airport on, on the first time or at the latest time, and we can reach the alternate, okay? Uh, this is this graph here shows the amount of fuel that we need in any case if we go from here or if we go to from here if we go to Kefablik or if we go to Gander okay and we need the most critical point is this one so if we go from here to Gander because we need a, a bigger amount of fuel uh, normally Normally, we check in our flight plan before takeoff, and uh, there is never a ver si lo encuentro. We ne we never have, or, or most of the time, we never have problems with critical fuel in any of our routes because with the normal fuel required with the flight plan and all the contingencies, 
we cover all the uh, all the situations and uh, it's no problem but we have to check we should check for the different situations and the different uh, ETPs and the different uh, alternates on route as I said before we always have much more fuel than the fuel requested for each situation but just in case that it happens at any time it should be a little deficit of fuel it has to be added to the flight plan it has to be inserted in the flight plan some companies do it here as an additional quantity of fuel so you know it and some companies just told you that they are going to do it during the dispatch on the ground I just and they inserted in the fuel quantity that is in the trip fuel okay but the important thing is to know that you have to put this amount of fuel to cover this situation okay uh, then As you could see during the dispatch, what, the, what we uh, we done today on the ground was complete the checklist, making sure that we have all the information and all the charts available for any case during the flight. At the end, the ETOPS flight, ETOPS procedures, is, uh, is, is intended to make the flight more under control, more safer, and uh, this policy could be perfectly applied to long haul flights with three or four engines. Uh, indeed, I think it's going to be in the future, all these procedures are going to be applied to this kind of flights. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference if it is two engines, three engines, or four engines. And companies, airlines will end up making these procedures and taking all these considerations into account when you dispatch a flight because it's much safer and you are continuously checking all the information and it is uh, a, a, a continuous flight watch from the company over the flight so i think it's much better for all of us all right something something that is going to be new within uh, our operation is also the the charting uh, information up to now, uh, we have we have been uh, working with uh, Atlas. Atlas uh, was a group of companies that uh, create their own charting. Iberia was uh, one of the members, and uh, with time, uh, this company is being um, uh, dissolved, and uh, we are also moving to a different. I think modern, most uh, uh, practical and most interesting uh, system of uh, create and use our charting information. And this uh, recently is the decision in Iberia is being made uh, in the last uh, in the last weeks. We are very close to sign the contract. Maybe next week, and we are moving to Lido, which is. Uh, information is a company owned by uh, Lufthansa and uh, if you want to see just a, a quick a quick view on the difference on the information and uh, how is how we're going to be working from now on because we uh, we are trying to not only change the information and the charting system but we are also moving to an electronic flyback and in the future in the near future on the Iberia airplanes we'll have installed an iPad on the cockpit where we can have this information and we also uh, we are also be working with the uh, fly smart application from uh, Airbus to, to make all the performance calculations and we also will have the uh, manual the fcom with procedures and the uh, operations manual no? in this case if we use panama we see here the arrival chart and the approach one 
and we go here and look for them to see a rapid difference information and we go here to the start approach you can see initially the approach over here yeah. um, it seems it seems quite similar so the change is not going to represent a big effort from per, from the side of the pilot because the information is quite similar you can see orange circles determine the minimum safe altitudes and you can see all the routes arriving from the same points no which is important uh, for pilots uh, especially for pilots of uh, long haul fleets and getting older as it's very easy to read <laughs> and uh, at any time of the day of the night you can adjust it to the zoom that you need in any moment no? all the information about airport about uh, altitudes about minimum safe altitudes routes and everything and in case you need to do any marking uh, you can choose the color of your preference and you can go like this so we can mark where is our airport or we can mark uh, where is the uh, any altitude affecting maybe a visual approach and uh, when it's finished you can keep it okay and you can go to the clipboard and uh, let me see and uh, that's it and you can go to the clipboard and check that is the the chart that I have just marked to be used further in the flight I before I have uh, I have uh, keep three different charts in the clipboard which is the uh, very easy access for us from any part of the uh, charting you can see the uh, number one number one and number one indications over here means that I have out of this area out of this area and out of this area one chart in the clipboard and if you go over there and you go to Panama I can see I have kept also the ILS to the clipboard in this case the difference eh, is a little bit more important because the minimum safe altitudes we ha we are re right now are represented in this right hand side corner uh, in this case they are on the same chart it's a little bit a little bit more graphical you have the communications information right over here in this case is right here and uh, also very important that we don't have in this chart we are using right now here is the information about the runway you have like uh, a typically information of distance and altitude to make a, a continuous check uh, meanwhile you approach the the threshold of the runway and then also you have here for runway 03 right you have the distance of the runway the width of the runway elevation if you have uh, a visual approach system and uh, a slope uh, all kind of important information for this runway okay the minima is in the same side and the rest of the chart is very very similar the same the same for the taxi chart if you go to the clipboard I did the same thing and kept it over here and I already signal the path that we may be following to the uh, to the parking position of course frequencies lengths slopes and all kind of information important information for the for the airport uh, also you have 
as a general information. We have a general part. This is like uh, the part C of the operations manual, and you can search, you can look for anything you want. For instance, if you say here low visibility and you immediately have at one glance you have all the all the items that you can find with information about low visibility operating minima and uh, it's very fast and very nice to work with I think this is going to be a very important this is going to be a very important move forward for us in terms of uh, information in terms of how the information is uh, displayed on the uh, on the chart and also it's going to be a very important the fact that we are going to be using an electronic flyback and no more paper on the cockpit the, at the end of the process, the only paper, the only uh, paper manual that we are going to have in the cockpit is the quick reference handbook. This is going to be the only one. The rest of the paper is going to be out. So, uh, what uh, what we can, what we gain with uh, all this, we gain first uh, reliability and second. A comfort of use, third, information, and very important also, uh, we are reducing weight in every airplane because right now the, the suitcase with all the paper information is like a 60, 60, 65 kilos of weight that we are going to be removing for the airplane also. So, uh, so far, as you know, all the companies we are involved in uh, very, very important uh, fuel policies, and we are all trying to save any kilo of fuel in every flight. It's very important. It, it seems uh, unbelievable that today, in this in this flight, we are going to be burning around 60 tons of fuel. And uh, if I, if I, I'm telling you, I'm talking about saving five kilos, ten kilos. It, it makes it makes seem funny, but it's important that every kilo that we can save in every flight is very important for the for the airlines and for the companies. Uh, the uh, budget for the uh, fuel figures in airline uh, is normally is around 30 percent. So. Any saving that we can we can do is uh, very important for us. Okay, and we try it every day, and uh, so far we are doing a very good job in uh, Iberia. Hotel India 840 recibido contacto radar a Hacienda según su plan de vuelo y mantenga escucha para posibles informaciones de tránsito. Copia de mantenimiento y vamos para 13500. Santos Domingo Delta 542 request for right deviation for weather. Delta 542 right deviation approved when able direct. Julie. Turn to DVA right Julie when able Delta 542. Thank you. Cactus 846, uh, Roger, stand by, we have your request. Okay. 
American 1549, Raider Service Terminated, Contact Miami 132 decimal 3. 32 decimal 3, good day, American 1549. Cactus 19066, uh, re-clear climb to flight level 300, due to Miami approval. Cactus 19066, climb to 300. I'd like to put a request in for 280. Well, so we go to 300 for now. That's Cactus 196. We'll clear from Miami later. Thanks. Roger. Blue 837, descend to 7,000 feet, QNH, on Santiago 29 or decimal 9 or 1. As I told you before, well, one of the most important things today is uh, fuel. Fuel figures for uh, any airline is, uh, is something that uh, impacts the a budget of the whole airline like about in uh, 30 50 percent so uh, every i think every airline around the world is uh, implementing a uh, different fuel policies with the uh, objective of uh, saving as much fuel as we can taking always also always into consideration that the safety is the first issue always in uh, in aviation so what, uh, what can we do about saving fuel in, uh, in a commercial flight? There is a few things that uh, maybe because we don't need to, so up to, this, uh, up to this point, we didn't pay a lot of attention, but uh, they are so necessary that we are now, uh, as I said before, uh, taking into consideration. And uh, even one kilo is a, is a very important thing to save from. From the very first, at the dispatch, there is a few things we can do with the flight plan. The flight plan, Iberia uh, works with a company, it's called Sabre, and we have all the information to make our flight plans, and uh, including the performance for the uh, different airplanes. And uh, we are trying to optimize in the information, the data inserted in the uh, flight plan, so we can get back the best the, the the best results and uh, always looking for the uh, for the optimum flight level uh, especially taking into account the uh, uh, payload trying to adjust the payload in the flight plan to the real payload on board of the airplane and uh, looking always for the optimum flight level also another measure that we have uh, uh, started with in the uh, flight plan is that we are trying to fly with a cost index very low. In this case, the cost index is six. As you know, the cost index is the relation between the cost of the fuel and cost any other cost, especially maintenance and labor cost in the company. Uh, why are we flying with uh, such a low uh, uh, cost index? Because right now, in this moment, we have made an analysis of the situation, and for Iberia, with the cost, labor cost, maintenance cost well, that we have right now in our company, it's much better to uh, fly a little bit slower, even if the flying time is increased by a few minutes. Okay, okay when we have done a few things on the flight plan, also the next one is the choose the, the right alternate. We are always trying to review all the alternates that we were using with our destinations. Uh, we are trying to find the, the best alternate, as I said before, taking in, having in mind the safety issues, the appropriate and uh, adequate alternates, airports, and also the distance from the alternate to the, uh, to the destination. Another important thing in the flight plan is the uh, and for the airplane is the performance factor. Uh, uh -huh. In this case, if you if you can see here, 
the performance factor is the correction that we insert in the uh, FMS to make all the calculations for the flight. Uh, it means that when the airplane is brand new, you're supposed to the, the cost, the fuel burn, supposed to be as close as the uh, Airbus information as we can. And once the pass is going by, the, the time the time is going by, the airplane, the engines, and the uh, airframe suffers a little bit of deterior deterioration. And uh, we're supposed to have here a performance fa factor adjusted to that real situation for that precise airplane. So all the information that we uh, we are working with and all the data that we have in return is the exact data to calculate the optimum flight level and the fuel cost. After that, there is a few more things that we can do since the uh, operational point of view. Uh, in the very first, when we arrive to the, to the airplane, in the very first uh, moments, we are taking a lot of care with the use of the APU. If we are in Madrid, our home base, and we are in any other airports with a very good air conditioning systems, uh, we don't need the APU, so we delay the starting of the APU until five or 10 minutes before the uh, pushback, okay? Also, during taxi, uh, taxi out or taxi in, especially for the uh, short and medium haul uh, flights, we are making a, a very precise study on uh, when it is possible to delay the, the start of the engine number two. And we are, uh, right now, we are taxiing an uh, Airbus 320 fleet with uh, one engine. In every case that we have a taxi time over seven minutes. And every time that the situation is not uh, complicated, it's not complex. Like, for instance, if we don't have to taxi in uphill with heavy weights, or if the uh, runway is dry, we don't have any contaminated runways. So there is, in those cases, no problem. We can delay the uh, engine start of the second engine, and that makes another saving of on fuel. Uh, also, for the uh, takeoff, after takeoff, we are trying to revise the altitude, acceleration altitude. Uh, for defect, we have inserted in all the FMS uh, airplanes 1,500 feet to um, set the climb, climb thrust. Uh, again, we are trying to do our best on this, uh, on this matter. So we are making a, a study of over all these uh, takeoffs that we can uh, put the climb power a little bit earlier. We are studying to lower the altitude acceleration between 800 feet and 1,000 feet. And that makes another increase in saving fuel. Uh, another measure is, uh, as I said, all the flight plans are calculated in the uh, with the criteria of best savings. And in this case, it's not only saving fuel, but it's also uh, saving on cost, depending on of the um, FIRs that we fly through. Because there is also another cost very important, which is taxes. And the taxes that company pays depends in a great matter uh, on the uh, FIRs that we fly through. Uh, for the descent, it's almost the same. We make a full study. Well, during cruise, if we don't need, the, the, uh, depending on the uh, people on board, passenger, number of passengers on board, we can regulate the pack flow and we select low. Low, low flow makes the uh, packs, the air conditionings, working in a, in a low way. So they don't need to um, uh, they don't need to pull so much air from the engines and the engines will work with a little bit lower load and uh, they will save fuel on that one too. Oh, the descent is also planned at the best top of climb, taking into consideration that we are going to do a descent pattern as clean as we can from the top of climb to the first 
uh, constraint to the first restriction on the flight path. And then again on the, uh, for the approach, we are trying to be very, very uh, mentalized to use the uh, uh, speed brakes or flap uh, positions or lowering the landing gear at the real, at the right time, not before, to try to not to increase the drag on the airplane to save as much fuel as, as we can. And then uh, before landing, we do and we check if we can do the landing with flap uh, full or flap three, and it's a little difference depending on the type of the airplane. It's not the same for every airplane, but uh, it used to be also a little difference in uh, fuel burn depending on the position of the flaps. Also, it's very important after landing, and uh, in this case, he, mm, taking into consideration the length of the runway, the altitude, the temperature, and all the factors in that have any influence in the landing uh, distance, uh, the use of reverse. If uh, it is possible to avoid the use of reverse, we are also trying to save a little bit of, of fuel on that one. And today, for instance, after landing, we are also going to stop one engine. For, because for the, uh, for the taxi in, if we don't use the reverse, we don't need to uh, wait the, uh, the uh, three minutes period of time for the engine to cool down. And uh, it's very easy. All we have to do is to start a little bit the APU. APU and after uh, leaving the runway, stop engine number two, and we can continue taxiing with one engine to the parking position. Okay. This, from the uh, very first point of view of the uh, pilots, uh, operational items, and all um, r relative with the flight plan and the uh, flight time. But also, there is any other departments, it's very important that maintenance do their job. It's very important that they, they keep the uh, engines as fit as possible. They are supposed to do uh, compressor and turbine washings every uh, once in a while, so the engine mm, doesn't burn more fuel than expected. And they always, uh, in uh, periodical uh, revisions, they are always trying to adjust flight controls and all moving parts in the airplane to avoid any uh, any drag, any uh, excessive drag over the expected in the normal flight in the normal conditions. And all this into putting all this together and uh, very 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 important and maybe the most important thing is how we how the pilots manage the flight. From the very first, uh, um, from the very first moment to the end, I mean, managed flight means to uh, considering all the weather conditions, considering the wind, considering outside temperatures, considering uh, the weight of the airplane, looking always for the uh, optimum flight level. Right now, we are very close. The optimum flight level is 390. We are flying. Just a little bit above flight uh, level, uh, looking always for the, uh, the, the the best one, and uh, uh, taking or having in your mind what is going on around you in your track in your route, uh, looking for shortcuts and uh, putting all this together and doing this, uh, trying to do always our best. In every flight that we make, we are trying to, to save on fuel a very important amount of, uh, of money. In this case, uh, our goal in Iberia is to save around 2% from the uh, calculated performance at the beginning of the year. And so far, um, at this month, the, uh, the results are being very good, and we are over a little bit the uh, the goals, we are at around 3% of the calculated uh, fuel burn for the flights that we make. Um, don't forget that we have 200 flights daily, and that makes uh, a little bit of fuel from every flight makes uh, a big amount of uh, safe, saving fuel 
uh, at the end of the year. And it's very important. We try to do our best always. We're getting close to the uh, top of the sand. Uh, right here, the white line is indicating uh, initially where we're supposed to be leaving our cruising level, 400, and starting our descent for destination. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I hope you enjoy the flight. It was a very nice flight also, and we are now uh, preparing the uh, approach for our landing in uh, Panama. We'll check weather conditions. We check uh, landing distances. We check uh, uh, affecting the approach, and uh, you can follow us in a minute as soon as as false Alfonso is ready yeah. to start. Ready to start. Just to check the eighties. Okay, right now he's listening to the. Uh, 80s, latest 80s information uh, on Panama Airport, which is the information we're going to use to make all the calculations. Okay. Okay, with uh, Charlie information, we, as you could see, Alfonso has received the latest uh, 80s information is information Charlie. Uh, we have inserted the weather information. We are going to have a QNH of uh, 1008. Temperature is 29 degrees. Wind is calm. And uh, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, as I said, today we don't have ILS, we don't have a localizer. The approach final approach is going to be a visual approach for la on la landing on runway 03 right and the minimum descent altitude is 790 feet and we have here all the uh, speeds the approach speed the minimum um, VLS speed the minimum speed for approach 133 and the approach speed 138 because of the uh, five knots correction today for landing we are going to use uh, flap 3 and uh, we'll try to avoid using reverse for saving fuel. So we are uh, using the auto brake in the uh, medium position. Under these conditions, and checking with the landing distance charts, we have performed and cross check all the uh, distance available that we need for the approach. And uh, we conclude that we need today 1,765 with 100. flap 3. 765 for a total landing distance of uh, 3050. So we are no problem. Initially, we don't have any uh, problem with the landing distance. Okay. Ready for descent? Ready for descent. I will do. Nivel 358 para Romeo. Cuando listo, descienda para 1.5000. Libre a 15000 le llamo Donando Papa Romeo. Ibera 6361, one ready, descend to 15000, QNH 1007. Ibera 6361 is leaving now, 400 down 15000, QNH 1007. Thank you. Okay, we are clear to 15000 feet. We are starting our descent with vertical speed. 2500. Omaha 43 Roger. Continue from south, 123 decimal 3, 4 lower. Dive. Uh, at 6,000 feet per minute until reaching the normal configuration, normal rate of descent. All right. Mark vertical speed 2,500, 150 Mark. blue. Perfect. 150 blue, we check. Okay, we continue with the briefing. Initially, we are coming through Aguja, the point here, to Akrin, Medib, and then we are expecting radar vectors for landing in runway 03 right. As you can see here, all the south and southeast sector, we have no trouble at all with uh, altitudes, so there's nothing, it's over the sea, we're going to be over the sea. And the northwest is the this uphills coming up to uh, 2,360 feet. We may be a little problem if the approach will be done through the north instead of through the south. This is the reason why we are expecting 
to uh, doing it uh, through the south, okay? And then only as a reference, we'll use this chart because there is no any other chart available for a visual approach. Uh, checking the minimum safe altitudes, as I said, the south is only 2,900 feet, and on the north, the minimum safe altitude is 5,000 feet. And uh, just in case... If you want to use this one, you have the yeah. traffic patterns. Uh, I have it here already. Okay. Okay. Traffic patterns uh, drawn for this approach. We have here both patterns for runway 03 left and 03 right. It was supposed to be guided. And in case we have to do it on our run, always we'll try to join the traffic pattern with a 45 degree angle and uh, over on the other side well I will tell you at an altitude of 1,500 feet for this kind of airplanes okay always under visual contact with the runway under these conditions and we complete the visual approach we're coming here the runway is long enough if everything goes as expected we will be leaving the runway on taxiway Quebec and then and then out of runway uh, taxiway Quebec will taxi to the uh, parking position. We still don't know which is the parking position. We'll have to wait for that. Yes, no. Today, besides the uh, uh, ILS out of service and localizer, we have no, as I say, we have no navigates for the approach. There is nothing else. Runway is perfect. We don't have any uh, information about any other inconvenience. And uh, just to check, Alfonso, is that right? We don't have any other things affecting well, no the approach. No. No. I, I checked the no times and no, no taxi was closed. No, nothing, no times. Nothing. I know nothing. Okay, few, few figures. Right now we have on board 9,000. Okay, 760 kilos. In case we need to, in case we need to divert to the alternate that today is uh, San Jose de Costa Rica, the minimum fuel for diversion is 7,100, which uh, check over here will give us a 20 more or less 20, 25 minutes uh, uh, holding delay over the standard one. So plenty of fuel for that, we don't have any trouble. Also, we check the weather at uh, San Jose and the weather in San Jose <coughs> right now is very good. And maybe for the period that we're supposed to be arriving in case we divert, we may find a reduced visibility and uh, light uh, rain and thunderstorms in the area of the airport, which is uh, normal and very uh, usual at this time of the year. Well, if you want to say something else, Alfonso? No, that we have no instrument approaches available at Panama, only no VOR and no, no ILS, because Tokumen, Tokumen VR is also, also out of service. So just visual is the only, visual oh. approach is the only thing we can do. Okay, uh, the <coughs> gross weight, right now we are waiting 163,580 one, uh, kilos. So for landing it's gonna be around 163. And with that, we also check, as I told you before, the speeds, speeds yeah. will be corresponding to these ones over Let here. Let me have a look and double check. Or the, the cleaning up a little bit the cockpit for the approach. Here. If you want to double check, I have uh -huh. um, green dot 205. 205. Uh, S speed 169. 169. Comfy 2, flaps 159. 158. Okay, Comfy 3, flap, I mean, flap, com, flap 3, configuration 145. Uh-huh. And uh, approach speed 134. Well, approach is 133 plus 5, 138. Okay, 138. Okay. 
One, three, three, one, three, four. Okay, okay config three is selected yep. and everything is finished and ready for the approach. So when you want, we can read the descent, dis descent checklist, please. Descent checklist. Descent auto brake. Auto brake in medium. Briefing. Flying heading 220 Iberia 6061. Heading 220 heading blue. 220 blue. Okay. Briefing. Cobra 438, radio service terminated. Egam status. Normal. Landing and runway data. 03 right, confirm. Minimum safe altitude. As we saw before, it's uh, 2,800 on the south and yep. 5,000 to the north of the airport. This end check is completed. Okay. Time to fly level 320, requesting 400. Combat 240, watcher, stand by for hire. 320, standing by for hire, combat 240. It's really, really significant, significant and important that we both concentrate on our on our job, on our duties, and uh, uh, it would be impossible to do it uh, safely and right if we don't have uh, the help of each other. In, in this case, as I said, I want to be the pilot flying, and uh, tomorrow or next uh, next flight, they will be the pilot flying, and I will be the pilot not flying. Uh, at the end, it's, it's a team. And we we help each other, and we have to check continuously what the other guy is doing and, and uh, what is helping. What is the uh, situation of uh, the airplane? Where we are flying? Where are the uh, obstacles? Where is the runway? Where are maybe other traffic and other airplanes around flying the same approach? And have put everything into your uh, space situation position to find out. It's a little hot. Today, as I told you from the beginning of the flight, I am enjoying the best co-pilots and first officers of Iberia. So I'm sure it's not going to be any trouble and you'll enjoy the uh, the approach as much as I will do. Panama approach, Iberia 6361 with information Charlie. Good afternoon, descending 10,000, heading 220. Iberia 6361, Panama approach, descend to 10,000. But did it down one zero thousand Iberia six three six one? One zero thousand confirmed. Heading 230 blue on uh, number Check. three in sequence. Just approaching the coastline. Ah, uh, it's not the best day to film. It's kind of hazy, yeah. Two one four three turn left heading zero six zero. Oh my four three zero six zero on the heading. We are somewhere here. Yeah, yeah. somewhere around. Here. Iberia six three six one transito las doce quince millas rumbo sur one siete tres ocho ocho mil seiscientos pies en ascenso no será factor. Continúe descenso para seis mil pies. Six thousand blue. Six one. Uh, we have the traffic on tickers and continue down six thousand feet. Affirmative. Oh my four three descent to four thousand. Oh my four three out of six for four thousand. Affirmative. The heading zero six zero. Oh my four three. Iberia six. Iberia six three six one reduced to one zero now. Turn right heading. 310. Turn right heading 310, reducing speed 180 knots, Iberia 6361. Waiting for the uh, permission to go into the channel. 2,500 minimum, 790 feet. Check. Affirmative descent to 3,000. Previous traffic now at your well. 1 o'clock, 7 miles northbound. Uh, Learjet 1,700 going to Hellabert. Once uh, reaching 1,700. 
Copa 8 to reduce to 190 from Nelex, Procedure and Good and Good Lambie. Okay. 190 knots, Nelex and Good Lambie, Copa 1, Copa 828. Copa 537 reduce now to 180. 180 knots, 537. Okay. Okay. All these ships waiting to cross the channel. Copa 105, Panama approach, descent to 6,000. You're going to start descent seeing the skyline of Panama right in the, uh, on the coastline. Over there. Flaps 2, please. Speed check, flap 2. Panama confirmed descent for Copa 828. Descent to 5000, Copa 828. Are we clear for approach? Yeah, well, he cleared us to Lambie, but not anymore. I can, I'm ready to look. Oh, I have the runway set. You want me to tell him runway yes, set? Yes, please. Copa 537, turn left direct to Lambie. Descent to 1700. 1700. One o'clock, I have both runways on side. Copa 828, traffic to follow top of clock, 8 miles. Turning or east on Empire 194,000 descending. Continue descent uh, to 2100. Behind, behind this. Oh, yeah. Descent to okay. 2100, yeah. 170 right. knots, and uh, looking for traffic, Copa 828. Iberia 6361, have runway 03 right on side. Iberia 6361, Roger. Clear visual approach, runway 3 right, contact Cumming Tower 118.1. Clear visual approach 03 right, and contact Tower uh, 118, Iberia 6361. Okay, disconnect the autopilot. Okay, fly director soft. Fly director soft. Altitude for the uh, missed approach. Missed approach is 3000. Set. Okay. Iberia, Tokuma uh, Tower, Iberia 6361. Good afternoon, visual approach here to right. Iberia, Iberia 6361, visual approach from with 03 right. Clear to land, 03 right, caution with birds, final approach, wind calm, QNH 1007. Clear to land, runway 03 right, QNH 1007, Iberia. Okay, runway inside. Tower Omaha 43, can we take it to the end on this for last? <laughs> Roger, Omaha 43, arrival time 34, clear at the end, at the end, Alpha taxiway. Okay, at the end, Alpha taxiway, Omaha 43, proceed to Alpha. 1,000, yeah. 2, 6, 8, wrong with 0, 3, left, 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 Good afternoon, Pentagon uh, 5317 with you. Pentagon 5317, roger. Flap 3, landing. Yeah. You are number 3, and clear to land. You are number 3, following a Boeing 737 uh, in front of you. And we got uh, traffic in view. Okay. 105, you are number 2, and sequence for 03 left. After departing traffic on 3 left, line up and wait. After a traffic line of one way, Copa 205, zero three left. Thank you. Reverse green. Documentar helicopter 007 al momento al suroeste. Auto break decelerating. Hotel Papa 007. I disconnected. Below 100. Aumento la visual en uno dos uno coma dos. Eighty knots. Sixty. APU. APU on. Copa 268-2403. Posterior a su salida, vuele Egueta 1 Bravo. Viento calmo autorizado a despegar 03 izquierda. On the ground. Autorizado a despegar 03 izquierda. Thank you very much. Very nice job. Welcome. Iberia 6361, arrival time 36. Now contact ground control at 121.9. 121.9 on the ground, Iberia 6361, heavy so long. Ground Iberia 6361, good afternoon. Vacating runway 02 red via Quebec. Iberia 6361, continue in taxi position 25 Bravo. Continue taxi position 25 Bravo, Iberia 6361. Confirmed to the left, huh? Yeah, left turn. Okay. Yeah, after still heading 210. Republica 531, superficie. After takeoff item? After takeoff, please. After landing item. 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 After
It's 21, 22, 24, 25. APU available. APU available, right. Stopping in engine number two, please. Sure. Stopping engine number two. Confirm number two. After landing, checklist completed. And, uh, so, parking 24, 25 Bravo, 25 the next one. Bravo. You see the approach coming? Yeah. A little bit more, this is like 25 this one. Bravo. This one here. Disconnected. I okay. Mean. Sometimes these lines for parking positions is the most difficult thing to see on the world. Yeah, right. They are dirty. Hardest part to, th to think yeah. to do. Colors are diffused. Okay, I have the uh, Marshall inside. Yeah. Okay, right side's clear. Right hands. And the brakes are. Okay. Okay, very good. Lights off. And slides disarm, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, we are finally at uh, Panama Airport. I think it was a very nice flight to have you on board today. We have nothing really uh, special. Uh, we had a chance to to talk a little bit about the ETOPS uh, procedures. Uh, flying the Airbus 330 and uh, for Iberia and uh, with uh, my crew and uh, the camera also on board who makes a little bit of company for us and uh, makes everything a little bit different from uh, a regular flight. Thank you very much for staying with <laughs> us. And uh, on the back to Madrid, on the uh, flight back to Madrid, we'll keep talking about something else. I will think it will be uh, much, much interest for all of you. Thank you.